So after the uh, before the break, we uh, were looking at Second uh, Timothy chapter four, the last few verses. We are looking at verse nineteen, where uh, uh, Paul tells Timothy to greet Aquila and Priscilla, and I uh, mentioned about all the good work uh, that Aquila and Priscilla had, have done and are doing, uh, and how they have been good companions and co-workers and friends of um, uh, of Paul. Uh, so Paul remembers them uh, and he tells Timothy to greet them. He also tells uh, Timothy to greet Onesiphorus. Uh, uh, does Paul mention Onesiphorus before? Yes, no? Do you remember that Paul uh, mentions about Onesiphorus? Does he do that before in his letter? You can at least type uh, the okay. Yes, once uh, he does. Thank you, Kannan. Uh, Paul mentions about Onesiphorus in um, in uh, the same second letter of Timothy to Timothy in chapter one, verse sixteen. Um, and Paul mentions there uh, that you know Onesiphorus served Paul both at Ephesus and at Rome. Uh, when Onesiphorus comes. Uh, uh, to Rome, he, you know, he searches, he looks for Paul, and uh, he finds him, and uh, we know that he's, he works alongside with Paul, and he serves um, Paul, and so Paul is also reminded of Onesiphorus, uh, and thankful for all that he has done, and sends his uh, greetings, okay? There's another lesson that we can learn here from the life of uh, uh, Paul is, you know, there are different people who uh, journey along with us at different points in time in our life. Uh, people who have helped us, people who have taught us, people who have mentored us, um, people who have uh, encouraged, strengthened us, built uh, uh, alongside us, uh, built and, uh, you know, given into the work that God has assigned for us. They have been part of it. And uh, we learn that, you know, we need to be thankful and grateful to them, uh, appreciate them for what they have done. Maybe, you know, just call them and thank them. Uh, just send a, a thank you card or note or uh, a text message, whatever. Uh, good to just uh, be reminded of people who have journeyed along with us, blessed uh, us or uh, mentored us and taught us uh, to just thank them. Okay. <clears throat> In verse uh, 20, uh, Paul says, uh, Erastus stayed in Corinth, uh, but Trophimus I have left in Miletus sick. Okay. Uh, and here it's uh, very strange to see that Paul is making the statement that uh, Trophimus uh, he left uh, in Miletus uh, sick. That means, uh, you know, uh, Paul would have prayed for him, um, uh, you know, like he's prayed for others and. Uh, uh, we've seen Paul doing amazing uh, miracles, uh, uh, sci science miracles and wonders through God has done it through uh, Paul's life. But here we see that, you know, uh, he would have prayed for Trophimus, but Trophimus, uh, you know, did not get well. He was uh, he was left sick in Miletus. Uh, and uh, but he acknowledges that, you know, he had to leave one of his fellow workers uh, sick Um uh, but we see that in spite of God using um, Paul mightily for uh, healing and deliverance in the lives of many people, yet there is uh, one person that he could not minister healing uh, to, and that is uh, Trophimus. So when we read this, uh, you know, how do we respond um, to this? Okay. Um, uh, yes, we know that Paul ministered in the same way that you and I minister, we ministered, and even Jesus ministered. Uh, when Jesus was on the earth, he was fully human, uh, and he ministered, or he did every, uh, uh, all the signs, miracles, and wonders through the power of the Holy Spirit, and he did it in the name of Jesus, and he gave this authority to the 12, and then to the 70, and to 
all of us as his believers, as his church, uh, uh, to do greater works and he has done greater signs, miracles and wonders. And we do it through the power of the Holy Spirit and we do it uh, in the name of Jesus. Um, but we do not know, and Paul also did it in the same way. He did it to the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of uh, Jesus. Uh, we do not know what sickness Trophimus was to, uh, going through, what was the duration, what was the outcome. Um, but uh, irrespective of all of that, and irrespective of the fact that uh, Paul prayed for me, have prayed for him, and he wouldn't have got well, uh, should not change our theology. Okay, should not change the way uh, uh, we or uh, the way we look at God, or we think what we think about God, or His nature and His attributes. We know that God is Jehovah Rapha; He is God, our healer. Uh, he has healed people in the past. He will heal them even today. He will heal them in the future. He's the same God, same yesterday, today, and forever. Nothing changes about his nature, his attributes, or who he is. Uh, so, you know, we don't change our theology around God, okay? Um, he's a God who will heal. It also does not change uh, what God has asked us to do in terms of uh, what he has commissioned us to do. Uh, God, Jesus told us that we need to go and heal the sick, uh, raise the dead, uh, cast out demons, cleanse lepers, uh, you know, and that is something that he's asked us to do and is something that we continue uh, doing. Uh, we will not always see success like Paul also acknowledged that he was not successful in this area, but it should not change our theology. It does not change the commission that God has given. Uh, we only press in. We press more for more of God's uh, anointing, for more of his favor, for more of his works to be released uh, in and through our lives. And we continue to do uh, what God has asked us to do. Uh, we just continue to pray and ask God for more of uh, him. Of course, when we don't uh, receive, uh, or we pray for healing for people, and we don't see healing happen, uh, it should not some. There should not be times when we change uh, our uh, our theology or our thinking, thinking that okay, it was a very difficult sickness. Maybe it's last stages or it's uh, way advanced stages. Nothing can be done about it, or the person is sinful, or this and that. We can come to our own conclusions. No, we don't do those things when we don't. Uh, see healing happen for the people that we're praying to, it should get us to go into a secret place with God and there battle it out with God, asking God, you know, what uh, what we did was, what, uh, what should we have done that was right? How should we have approached it? What should we do better next time? Uh, asking for more of, uh, you know, uh, his anointing, uh, his leading, and we learn we learn through failures. Failures is not something that we sit back and say, okay, we'll never pray for anyone else. Or uh, it's not God's will to use me for healing. I'm not going to be a, I'm not a healing evangelist. Uh, God will use me in different other different areas. No, uh, God is, uh, go, will use you, but it's important for us to always go back to God and always ask him what we have not done right, what we should have done, how we should have approached it better, and how can we approach, uh, how should we approach it better next time, what should we uh, do. And we learn, we learn more about God, his ways, his ways of doing things, and we grow more in him and we become more effective ministers. In verses 21 and 22, he says, that, uh, Paul tells Timothy, you know, do your best to come before winter. And then he talks about a few people who send their greetings. He says, Eubulus greets you uh, as well as Prudence, Linus, Claudia, and all the brethren. And then he, you know, he uh, tells Timothy that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, uh, with your spirit and grace be with you. Amen. Okay, so that is how he ends his letter. And this is the last letter he writes before uh, he's martyred. So the key takeaway verse is 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, where it says, Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Be, uh, persevere, be patient, okay, and persevere uh, when you minister to people. 
So that is the end of Second Timothy. Uh, any questions? Any, any comments you'll want to make? No questions? No thoughts? Anything that you want to share? Anything that has really impacted your life or has ministered to you? Or was like a rhema word that came up, uh, you know, just came powerfully uh, as you studied Second Timothy? Anyone wants to share? Just four of you in the class, but it's okay. Any of you all want to share from uh, this letter of Paul to Timothy, second letter, what has impacted you, has blessed your heart? Are all of you in class? Yes, yes. ma'am. Yes, Thomas, okay. And today what we discussed, um, especially about the doctrines, people love to hear the message call, prosperity message, and things which good to hear, uh, especially when we observe today's generation. People love to hear those kind of things only. They don't want the strong word of God, and corrections and all. So somewhere... Uh, we we were in the days we have to uh, stick on to the word of God, strong doctrines that 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 reminds remind me to stand in the doctrine, the word of God, truth. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Anything that you learned from Second Timothy? Anything that has spoken to your heart? Okay, if uh, none of you want to share, we'll uh, we'll just discuss or decide when uh, we'll have a test for uh, Second Timothy. Any date you would like to suggest? Is 18th uh, or uh, 16th March fine? March 16th? Is that okay? Okay, Siddharth says yes. Dave says fine. Okay. Okay, then we'll have it on uh, 16th of uh, March. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to Titus, uh, the book of Titus, Paul's letter to Titus. Okay. We looked at First Timothy and we studied Second First Timothy and Second Timothy. Now we look at uh, Paul's letter to Titus. Uh, Paul's epistles to Titus and Timothy uh, have uh, generally been called as the pastoral epistles, uh, but they were originally regarded as personal uh, letters alongside uh, Philemon uh, because they were addressed to individuals. Uh, but though Paul addressed them to individuals like Timothy, Titus, um, and uh, you know Philemon, they guide. It also guides people in matters concerning pastoral care of the church. So basically, uh, Timothy and Titus, uh, the letters that Paul writes, uh, he guides them in matters concerning uh, the pastoral care of the church. And uh, these books are not just uh, limited, or these letters are not just limited to personal uh, and private communication, 
but uh, were also to be read out to the congregation. So they were also somewhat official in uh, character. And hence, uh, uh, you know, they're called as pastoral epistles because uh, it has to do a lot about uh, pastoral care, uh, pastoral responsibilities, how to uh, take care of uh, the church and how to uh, lead the people. Uh, different aspects of church matters. Um, and these books are pastoral in nature because they give uh, directions uh, how to deal with the uh, false teachers, how to establish the leaders uh, leadership in uh, the local church, and how to encourage uh, godliness. Okay, So because it talks about all of these aspects, it's called as the pastoral uh, epistles. Now, who wrote... Uh, uh, this letter to Titus. Or who wrote the book of Titus? For us, it's a book in the Bible, but it's basically a letter. Yes, it's Paul. Uh, you know, we can surely say it's Paul, uh, and Paul is the author because the letter themselves itself, uh, you know, uh, mentions that it has been written by Paul, just like, uh, uh, you know, First and Second Timothy mentions there. It uh, shows us that uh, Paul is writing that letter to uh, Timothy, as well as Titus, because it's mentioned in the letter. Uh, now, who is Titus? Do any of you have any information or idea about who Titus is? Was he a Jew or a Gentile? Was Titus a Jew or a Gentile? No responses. Okay, Titus was a Greek speaking uh, Gentile believer. Uh, he was probably converted by Paul uh, either in Antioch uh, that is in Syria today uh, in 43 or 44 AD, or he might have been, uh, you know, uh, converted uh, during Paul's first missionary journey when Paul was in Pamphylia or Galatia, that is uh, 47 or 48 AD. Okay, we see that Paul takes uh, Titus with him to attend the Council uh, of Jerusalem. And he asked the leaders uh, in Jerusalem uh, to take the decision um, uh, or, uh, you know, uh, not to require uh, Titus um, to be circumcised because he is a Gentile believer. So he, he requests the council at uh, Jerusalem uh, uh, to, you know, not to make it a requisite that uh, Titus be circumcised. But even though he's not circumcised, he's a Gentile to allow him to uh, minister the word of God. And we read this in Acts chapter 15, verses 1 to 21. And we see that the council uh, of leaders uh, of Jerusalem and at Jerusalem agreed with Paul. And uh, they did not insist that uh, Titus should be circumcised. In, uh, in Titus chapter 1, verse uh, 4, Paul describes uh, Titus as a true son, okay? Uh, so just looking at this, we can gather a little information about his relationship, uh, character, personality of Titus uh, from what Paul writes about him in his epistles. Not much is known about him uh, in person, but uh, we basically receive some information about Titus of what Paul writes about him in his various epistles. So in this very letter, or in this very book of Titus, Paul calls uh, Titus as a true son in our common faith. So just like Timothy, uh, you know, Titus also was a son, a true son uh, in the faith. Uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, uh, we see that Paul mentions Titus as a genuine brother uh, to the Apostle Paul. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 23, uh, you know, Titus was a partner and fellow, is mentioned there as, uh, as a partner and fellow worker with Paul. 
uh, in second corinthians 12 verse 18 uh, you know uh, paul uh, uh, you know uh, talks about titus as somebody who walked in the same spirit as him okay so titus walked in the same spirit as paul second corinthians 12 verse 18 again the same verse says that uh, you know uh, titus walked in the same steps as paul that means in the same manner of life uh, here was titus who just loved paul uh, saw his work his ministry the way god is using him uh, saw paul's life and he was just imitating him was just copying him uh, uh, the way he was ministering the way he was living his life Life. So Paul says that he walked in the same steps as Paul and the same manner of life. And in Titus chapter 2, verse 7, um, you know, uh, we see that uh, it mentions that therefore Titus could be a pattern to other believers. Okay, why could he be a pattern to other believers? Because he just uh, uh, copied Paul, the way he ministered, the way he lived, the way he served God, where he honored God. He just imbibed that. He just made it part of his lifestyle. He just lived the way, the same way. And uh, we see that uh, Titus could now come to a position where he could be a pattern to other believers. Okay. Uh, Titus was one of Paul's closest and most trusted co workers. Um, and uh, we know this, or we have evidence to this because of the fact that Paul sent him to uh, the troubled churches first at Corinth and Crete. Okay, we know Corinth was going through a lot of, um, uh, um, you know, doctrinal problems, uh, structure of the church, and uh, the way they were exercising their gifts, uh, the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, so Paul writes two letters to the church at uh, Corinth, and he sends, uh, uh, Paul sends uh, Titus there, um, to you know, uh, to oversee the churches there, to uh, work out things, to um, uh, minister there. So these two difficult places, Corinth and Crete, uh, you know, he sends Titus. Now, after Titus helped uh, Paul at Ephesus during his third missionary journey, he was sent from there to Corinth, uh, and Paul sent along with. Uh, uh, Titus, the first letter to the Corinthians, we read about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18. Now, after assisting the believers uh, there in Corinth and doing what he had to do, what Paul had uh, commanded him, charged him, uh, told him to do, uh, we see that Titus took news of the church at Corinth uh, to Paul when Paul was at Philippi. Uh, we read this in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 6 and 7, okay? Uh, and then we see that uh, from there, Paul, Paul writes, uh, based on all that he's heard from Titus, he writes his second letter to the church at Corinth, that is 2 Corinthians. Um, uh, he writes it from Philippi, uh, and he, uh, you know, he sends it along with uh, Titus. Okay, so Titus again takes the second uh, letter of uh, to the current to the church at Corinth from uh, Philippi. Okay, he, we also see that Titus helped uh, uh, collecting some money from the church at Corinth for the poor saints uh, at Jerusalem. We read about this in Second Corinthians chapter two, verses twelve and thirteen, uh, chapter seven, verses five and six, and chapter eight, verse six. Okay. After Paul was released from his uh, house arrest in Rome in 62 AD, that is his first uh, imprisonment, his first house arrest, uh, Titus travels with Paul to Crete. Uh, and uh, we read in Titus chapter 1 verse 5 uh, that Titus and Paul worked together in Crete, spreading the gospel, establishing churches, uh, but Paul had to leave Crete and he could not just uh, leave there because he knows that uh, there was a lot more work to be done with the church. The church needed a lot of help, uh, support. And so he uh, leaves Titus there at Crete to continue the work. Okay. Um, in this letter that Paul writes, uh, he summoned Titus to rejoin uh, uh, Paul at Nicopolis, um, and we see that either uh, Artemius or Tychicus 
uh, you know, would have come and taken over the work uh, at uh, Crete so that uh, Titus could join Paul at Nicopolis. Uh, and we read about this in Titus chapter 3, verse 12. And so assuming that they would have taken over responsibility at Crete when Titus was at uh, Nicopolis, um, and Paul would have, uh, you know, commissioned him or given him a, a, a job to do, a work to do, uh, uh, or an evangelistic mission uh, to a place called Dalmatia uh, or Dalmatia. And later tradition uh, tells us that, uh, you know, Titus returned back to Crete and, uh, and he was described as a bishop there until his old age. So that is what we learn from tradition that uh, after he finished uh, whatever work that Paul had for him, you know, he goes back to Crete and uh, he later on becomes the bishop uh, of uh, the church at Crete until his old age. Okay. So let's look at uh, Crete. Now, Crete is one of uh, the largest islands in the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, the Cretan people uh, or the people at Crete had acquired uh, a very disgraceful, bad reputation in the Roman world. They did not have a very good reputation. They had a very bad reputation. And, uh, you know, uh, Paul in his letter to Titus or in this book of Titus, he, uh, he mentions or he quotes one of the poets, the Cretan uh, poets, uh, Epimendus. Uh, in Titus chapter 1, verse 12, and Epimendus, who is from Crete, he writes about his own people. He says, Cretan, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, and lazy gluttons. Okay, so this is uh, the image that uh, Cretans had, uh, and the people living in Crete also knew that, you know, they were that people in Crete were liars, always liars, this poet says, evil beasts and lazy gluttons. And Paul is quoting this uh, uh, poet Epi, uh, Epimendus in his uh, letter to Titus. Okay, we read this in chapter 1, verse 12. Now, um, how did the, the gospel reach Crete? Uh, probably they're saying that on the day of uh, Pentecost, the Passover, uh, you know, when... Um, the disciples had um, uh, uh, were uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, the 120 of them. And we see that Peter gives his first uh, message. And because of the, the strong, mighty hurricane wind that came, the sound of that hurricane wind that came, uh, many people who had come all from all over the world to Jerusalem to, uh, to uh, celebrate the Passover, uh, they heard the noise in this upper room. They gathered there uh, and they saw each one of them, you know, speaking in different tongues, but in languages that each one of them had come from. And they understood because they were, they said they were praising God. And we know that Peter preached the message and uh, 3000 were saved. Um, and so, you know, some of them who had come from Crete, um, uh, probably, you know, uh, these Jews who had come from Crete were converted uh, when Peter preached and they went back uh, uh, to Crete and they planted churches. Um, so we see that uh, in Crete, the, some of these Jews who were promoting false doctrines uh, as well. We know that uh, in 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, also Paul mentions about this uh, Jewish fables, myths, uh, and they were making, and also the some Old Testament rituals like uh, circumcision, and they were making it very difficult for uh, the believers, the Gentile believers, uh, by opposing them, by saying that, you know, talking all of these myths and fables, which they, and genealogies that they need to know, and also, uh, you know, be circumcised. And uh, so there was a problem, and hence we see that, uh, uh, you know, Paul feels the necessity to leave um, Titus back there at Crete. Now, what is the date this uh, letter was written? Uh, it was probably written between 63 uh, and 66 AD. After Paul left Titus at Crete, he went on to Macedonia, uh, where he most likely would have written to, them, to Titus uh, in response uh, from a letter that he received from Titus or maybe he received a report from Crete. So he's writing a letter to encourage uh, uh, 
uh, Titus and also to talk about some church matters and to instruct him and guide him. Um, so Paul wrote this to Titus instructing him uh, to put into order all the remaining matters which was left undone uh, in the churches at Crete. And uh, Paul wrote this uh, letter uh, because he knew that two other workers, Zinus and Apollos, uh, who are mentioned in Titus chapter 3, verse 13, were going to Crete, and hence Paul thought he could uh, send this letter with them and also, uh, you know, uh, inform um, or instruct Titus uh, the remaining matters that uh, of the church that he had to deal with, he had to take note of, and um, that he had to do okay so that is the introduction to titus uh, all about titus and crete and why paul writes this letter any questions comments any doubts okay nothing Okay, if there's nothing, then uh, we will not uh, begin chapter one. Uh, uh, we'll do this uh, uh, next Wednesday. Okay, uh, so we'll con we'll look at uh, Titus chapter one next uh, Wednesday. Uh, just to confirm again that uh, test or the second assessment for uh, on Second Timothy, the whole of uh, Second Timothy. Uh, is on um, March 16th, which is a Wednesday, okay? Okay, thank you all for uh, joining class. Have a blessed day ahead and um, take care, okay? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Thomas.